Hello, and welcome to the Senior Medicare Patrol, SMP, How to Compose an Email Presentation Sponsored by the Wyandotte Leavenworth Area Agency on Aging and ADRC. That's Aging and Disabilities Resource Center. In today's world, emails are one of the fastest ways of communication, so it's important to know exactly what an email is and what free services are out there and how to set up an account with one of those services. In this presentation, we'll start by going over what components make up an email, then we'll move on to how to create an email account with a few different services like Gmail and Yahoo. We'll also have a small video on how to log into Gmail. Then we'll finish on a few tips to keep in mind when you're creating your own email username. So let's get started. Address refers to an electronic location in which messages are delivered to. Here we have an example in blue of what an email address may look like, and its components are as follows. The username, which identifies an email account in the domain. These are customizable, but there cannot be two emails with the same username in one domain. You can see it highlighted here in red. Next is the at symbol. It indicates the location or institution of the email recipient. If that is the second level domain, which is usually the name of the business, organization, or internet service provider who owns that domain. So Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook would be a few examples of those. And lastly, as it's the last part of the email address, is the top level domain. Also called the domain extension, it is the final part of the address that directs the sender to the correct recipient. Its examples are .org, .com, .edu, and .gov. Most common email services you'll encounter in your day-to-day -day life are Gmail, Outlook, iCloud, which can be used by Apple product users, and Yahoo. We'll go over how to sign up for all four, but we're going to go into more detail with Gmail. So when creating an Outlook email account, you'll start by going to outlook.live.com slash OWA. Once there, you'll click create free account. It will be a blue button shown here down in the bottom image on the right. It will take you to a page like the top image on the right entitled create free account. Type in the username you want for your new email. And once that's done, you can click the down arrow and choose between the domains at outlook.com or hotmail.com. After that, it'll redirect you so you can create a password. Make sure it's something you can easily remember. Then you'll be prompted to fill in information like your name, your country or region, along with your birth date. Then it will ask you to enter the characters from the CAPTCHA image, which you'll see an example of on the left. So CAPTCHA, or Completely Automated Public Turing Test to tell computers and humans apart, is a system designed to make sure that whoever is creating the account is a real person and not a robot. You'll only have to type in the letters that are shown on the screen in order to prove that you're not a robot. So in the example here, you would type in the letters that appear in blue, the really dark blue. Once you've completed that, you'll be signed into your new Outlook email account. Now, if you have an Apple product like iPhone, iPad, iPod, Touch, or Mac computer, you can create an email account with Apple's service known as iCloud. Now, the setup is different for iPhones and, and Macs, so we're just going to go over how to set it up with the Mac computer. After you've logged onto your Mac, you'll go to the Apple menu, which you can see an image of here in the parentheses. Then you'll click on System Preferences then Apple ID. Several options will appear, which you'll choose iCloud. Another series of settings features will open to you. You'll have to scroll down until you find Mail and select it. 
follow all on-screen instructions to show, that show you how to create your iCloud mail address. You'll see a picture of some of those instructions in the image on the right. Now they won't look exactly like that, but they'll look very similar. Once done that, you will have created your account. If you'd like to create a Yahoo email account, you'll start by going to yahoo.com and click sign up. It will redirect you to a page with information you can see like on the image to the right. Then you can fill out the information it asks for, including your name, the username you'd like, and your password. After you've filled all that in and hit continue, it will ask you to enter your cell phone number to confirm your new account. It will send you a one-time password to your phone number, which you'll use to verify your account. You enter it online, after which it will directly take you to your new Yahoo email address. Now we've come to creating a Google email account. To create one, you'll go to gmail.com and click create an account. It will direct you to a page like the image to your right. Once there, you'll fill out information like your first and last name, along with your new username and password. You'll need to type it in twice to confirm it. Then you'll select next. Then it will need you to verify your phone number to prove that you're not a robot. So it will send you a text message to your phone that you'll need to answer as it is the code that will authenticate your account. It will also ask some more questions like your birthday that you will have to answer. The last thing it will ask of you is to read Google's terms of service and privacy policy. Towards the bottom of the screen should be a blue button labeled, I agree. After you've finished reviewing the terms and policy, you can click the I agree button. Once it's been clicked, it should redirect you to your new email account. So now we're gonna show you how to log into Google once you've created a Gmail account. Now, one thing to remember, the video we'll be showing you has an email we'll be logging into, but it's only an example. Do not use it to communicate with the Area Agency on Aging, as we'll provide our actual email at the end of this presentation. So you'll first come to this page, that's Gmail's login page, where you'll need to type in your Gmail account along with your password. So we're typing that in right now. It, then you'll hit next. And that takes us to the inbox of your emails. So you will receive, you'll see all your received emails here. Above your emails are your tabs, which sort your mail into three categories. Your primary inbox, your social, so Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and others, and then promotions. Promotions are going to be your emails from businesses. If you'd like to compose an email, you can go over to the left side of your screen where the plus sign is. Once you hover over it, the word compose will appear, which you'll want to click on. A new draft will appear in the bottom the screen like you're seeing as we're typing in. The first line is to two, who is going to be the person who is receiving your email. So I'm just going to send it to myself so you'll see that. Then you'll move on to the subject line, which tells your audience what your email is about. So we're just going to type an example. After that, you can write the message of your email. And then after that, you can even add photos or documents to your email if you wish. To do that, you'll go to the bottom icons at the bottom ribbon of your draft and click attach file. After clicking that, it'll take you to the photos you've saved onto your computer. Where you'll want to select the file you'd like to add. Once you've finished writing your email, you can hit send. So our file is added and we can now hit send. And there you can see it in your inbox. We, when we click on the photo file, you'll see that it has been attached to the email. So what, one thing to remember is that Gmail can only hold files as big as 25 megabytes per email. So if you want to upload a lot of photos 
be aware that you may have to send multiple emails in order to send them all. And that is just a quick look at how Gmail works. Now, before we close out this presentation, here are some helpful tips to be mindful of when you're creating your email's username. Don't use nicknames, especially if you're going to use this email to communicate with professionals. Stick to using your legal name or the name you wish to be professionally known as. Avoid numbers. Do not use random words like basket or blue shoe or some other word that may mean nothing to other people but is personal to you. That's something that's a bit more fit for your email's password than it is for your username. Make sure your username is something you can easily remember. That's why using your formal name is a great idea for your username. And if you email organizations like Leap or DFC or the Area Agency on Aging, they'll know that your email is a reliable one and not a robot. And there you have it. That concludes our presentation. If you like our content, check out the Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas' YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash c slash unified government. Once there, click the playlist tab and choose Wyandotte Leavenworth Area Agency on Aging. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Or you can join us on our Facebook group, Wyandotte Leavenworth Area Agency on Aging. If you'd like to speak with the Council on Aging, their office is located at 1830 South Broadway Street in Leavenworth, Kansas. Their main office phone number is 913-684-0777, and their office hours are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you'd like to get in touch with the Wyandotte Leavenworth Area Agency on Aging, their office is located at 849 North 47th Street, Suite C in Kansas City, Kansas. Their main office phone number is 913-573-8531. You can visit their webpage at www.ycokck.org slash aging, or you can email them at 60 plus at ycokck.org. Their office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. On behalf of the Area Agency on Aging, we'd like to thank you for joining us today and hope the information that we've provided has been helpful for you. Be sure to check out more of our videos and have a great day.